honorable and respected brothers and elders <coughs> and young friends. Yesterday, with the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, was that day in the Muslim calendar, which was one of the most weightiest days in all of the Muslim calendar. Throughout the whole Islamic year, the month of Ramadan holds a very senior place and position within the Islamic calendar. And in addition to Ramadan, in addition to the auspicious days of Ramadan, day of Eid, Eid al-Adha and the days building up to Eid al-Adha, the Ashra, the 10 days, wal-Fajr, wal-Layalin Ashr, wal-Shaf'i wal-Watr, wal-Layli idha yasr. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he swears a qasam and takes an oath by the 10 days in the Dhul Hijjah, which is the 12th Islamic month. Yesterday was the day of Arafah and we saw people proceeding towards from Mina going to Arafah and in the evening leaving to go back to Muzdalifah and then from there they would go back to Mina, they would pelt the shayateen, the jamarat. This within itself, some of you have been fortunate to go, some of you are fortunate to, to, to go in the future. That person who claims to be an ashiq of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Someone who loves the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam We can't help but avert our nazar to, and look at the seerah And look at the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's life How and what did he do in the days of Hajj? What was his life? What did he used to do? For those of you who have been, you may have been fortunate to go You may have seen a vast array of things the question here which is food for thought for each and every one of us who are sitting here today. Those of you who have been, ask yourself a question. Is our life, has it changed for the best? And those people who we know who have been, we don't look at anybody condescendingly, we don't look down upon anybody. Have people changed when they came back from the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or not? It's not merely a ritual. Going to Hajj is not merely a ritual. It is a time when a person goes and changes their ruh and changes their direction to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But what were the days of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa building up to the day of Hajj, building up to Arafah, building up to these auspicious days? It mentions Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa he used to go to the places where people would congregate prior to the building up for the days of Hajj. Urqav, this was a very prominent gathering place for the people of Jahiliyyah even in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu and before. He Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam knowing that it would be a big gathering of people, he would go there and he would meet the people and he would call them unto Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. One person mentions, I used to see Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam going behind the people. فَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ تَفَلَ بِوَجْهِهِ وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ حَفَى عَلَيْهِ التُّرَابِ وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ سَابَهُ حَتَّى انْتَصَفَ النَّهَارِ the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he's inviting people unto Allah was what? He would start in the early days, go to people, invite them, tell them about Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. He would make da'wah, he would encourage them to turn back to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. There were some people who would respond in which way? They would not accept his call. Man tafala biwajhi, they would spit in his face. وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ حَثَى عَلَيْهِ التُّرَابِ There will be those people that would take mud and throw it in his face. There would be those people who would swear at him, curse him, swear at his family. This did not stop him, it did not deter him from ever turning back from that mission which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him. It did not deter him for one second that I cannot call people unto Allah. Halat are difficult, is very tough. What are people going to think? Oh, log ke aksan. He didn't think like this. His duty and job was to call people unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at any cost. He would go to the people who worship idols and did shirk. This did not deter him, my respected brothers. People would be spitting at him, throwing dust at him, throwing things at him, cursing him. This did not stop him from turning and turning back to the people. One Sahabi mentions he saw uh, when it came to ha when it came to the zenith, the the zawal, the heat, the period at that time when it's the hottest in the day. His daughter Zainab radiallahu anha would come with a burtam with with some water, and he would she he would see his daughter had tears in the eyes. She was crying and she could see the Prophet sallallahu and he said to her, "Oh my daughter, don't worry." 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not give me disgrace and villa. Meaning, this job which I am doing is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Any difficulty that comes in the path, any issue that comes in the path can be overlooked because I'm doing it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It was irrespective of what difficulty that came across because he knew why he was doing this. Allah had already promised the Sahaba that you will enter into Jannah. He already assured the Prophet ﷺ that you will enter into Jannah. It was this worry and concern that how the people until the day of judgment, how can they turn to the deen of Allah? Why do we lament this thing again and again? Why do we talk about this thing again and again? We claim to love the Prophet ﷺ, yet we don't follow him in his actions. Just merely growing a beard is not enough. Just merely praying salah is not enough. It's to have that dard, that pain, that gham. That when we see the deen in front of us, being made ridiculed, reducing in front of our eyes. When we see deen being made a mazak of, this should be the thing that affects us in our hearts. It's easy to call yourself an ashik rasul. I love the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's easy. That person who puts his hand in the hand of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who follows him in every single footstep, this is real ishq. I ask you a question, and this is not meant to make anyone feel low or upset or anything like this at all. When this is the condition of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he was calling those individuals who did not turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is food for thought now. When we see our children, going on to the wrong path. Our children who are brought up in, in, in UK, in our country, our home, this is home for me. I don't know about you guys, this for me is home. When our people say, gee, I'm going home bro, home. I don't know, where's home? You've been living here for 60 years bro. I'll take home, Pakistan, India. It's now our respective forefathers country, I appreciate that. I've got my ties there as well. Just in case some of you think I'm working for EDO and I'm a sellout, I'm not. Alhamdulillah, I've also visited my wife from there and I studied there as well, it's an amazing place. Mashallah, a few years ago, Gari Hanif Jalandari came from Pakistan and he gave a kar guzari about the students that became half of the Quran in Wifaqul Madaris. He mentioned, Alhamdulillah, 55, 50 to 55,000 students became half in one year. But concentrating on this subject, my dear brothers, this thinking we need to change. Okay, my children will just follow suit. They will just automatically become decent Muslims. They will automatically just take, take the right mantle and become and go on the right track. Where we are living, my dear brother, there's such a situation. You can be from the pious of families, you can try your best. It's Allah's, it's Allah's will who can be safe and who's not. You can try your best, you're not going to save every individual. You might not even be able to save yourself. But my, this, is my, this is my thing now. When we used to see the Prophet we read in the books of Hadith, be reading the books of Sirah, he would go to one one person, people would spit at him, curse him, throw mud at him and do all sorts. What fikr have we adopted for our families that are living in UK? Did how many of our youngsters knew that yesterday was the day of Arafah, the main day of Hajj? How many of us fasted? It's nafil, it's not even fard. But this food for thought, the most azim day, one of the most azim days in the day of the Muslim calendar. The first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah up to the day of Eid. The first nine, every day you fast, you get the reward equivalent of fasting one whole year. Every night's ibadah is equivalent to Laylatul Qadr. Fasting on the day of Arafah, you kafiru sanat al madhiya wal baqiya. It causes an expiation of your previous year's minor sins and your coming year minor sins. Which house had a mahal yesterday of Arafah? Where, which house had the discussion of Hajj and Umrah? Which house had the discussion of the life of Rasulullah? I'm ready to make this bold statement that our youngsters being holidays, 95% of them just sat with devices in their hands. Many of us walking to and fro past our children, neither thought it important to address them, to encourage them, to create a mahal at home. Kichalo yar, it's holidays, come and sit down, let's read some hadith, let's learn something. But when something hits the fan, and the kid becomes a drug addict, the girl runs away from home, all manners of problems, kufur is creeping in, then 
We want to go to the Malbi South, and then first we blame the committee, we blame the masjid, we blame the madrasa, and then we finally say that my child is Gumrah. When Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would cry for the mushrikeen and majus, how should we be crying over our children? We should be crying tears of blood. Where are our youngsters going to be tonight? On the day of Eid is a time when people should be getting together, spending time with family. Our youngsters have one thing in mind. Go to a place, hire out a car, run around in your car, smoke drugs. This is what's happening in our community. We can't push these things underneath the carpet. It may be bitter for some people to hear. Now why is he talking about this on the member? Because it's our hug to talk the truth. Where are our shabab? Ask yourself that question. Where are the future of this ummah? Where is the future of Crawley? Go to the local clubs. Go to the local pubs. Go to your local drug dealers. They are our youngsters. Our brothers. Our sons. Our daughters. You don't have to be Pakistani to look at another Pakistani as your own. He can be Bengali, Pakistani, Moroccan, Algerian. Al Muslim Kal Jasad al Wahid. The Muslim is one body. We don't look at Maghribi and Mashriqi. We don't look at black and white. We don't look at rich and poor. Ya ayyuhan nas. Qulu la ilaha illallah tuflihu. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was telling the people. This is what his da'wah would be. Say la ilaha illallah and become successful. Our qasam by Allah, our hearts and eyes tear. Which direction are we going in? By Allah, if you knew the phone calls we got, I'm not even Imam, you guys know I've left here, how I many? I said 2011. Still people call. Kiyar, this masala, this masala, this problem, this issue. It's not to create despondency within the ummah. We're not trying to make people feel upset. We're trying to say, Yar Allah, Vaste, let's make some fikr. Let's change our thinking. What have we not done? What stone have we not left unturned for their dunya? In the excuse of their worldly needs, we get double jobs, work weekends, work nights, work days, save money, buy properties. For what? For who? For those children who are potentially losing their iman. The most valuable thing which they need is iman. We've based each other's success purely based on wealth. MashaAllah, they've been doing a lot of work. They've been leaving two places. It's a very beautiful life, man. But he's a successful man. He left a couple of houses to the kids. If, you, if, if wealth was based on, the criteria, criteria of success was based on wealth. Let's look at the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In the hadith it mentions, no two days, you'd never have two days. Where the Prophet, two times where the Prophet وسلم, and his family ever ate till to their full on two occasions. And he made dua, Allahumma ja'al quta ali, uh, uh, rizq ali Muhammadan quta. Oh Allah, make the provisions of the family of the Prophet وسلم, just sufficient. Why did he make this dua? So no one can come afterwards and say, because I am poor, I can't follow Islam. He led the example to show you don't need money to become successful in Allah's court. Amongst each other, yes, of course, because we base our criteria purely on that. Because such and such a person's got a big house, they're the talk of the town. Such and such a person's son got a qualification, he's the talk of the town. Someone, one you is riding around in a hired Ferrari, a hired Ferrari. And he's the talk of the town. It's not even his, my brother. But these are the things which you and I get robbed from. Okay, mashallah, ji badi shay, ji badi shay. I'm saying let's correct this way of thinking. It's not going to come overnight and this course needs to be done. But what are we instilling within our children? If you don't become this, you're a nobody. If you don't learn this, you're a nothing. You're a nobody. You're a disgrace. You're a, you know, you're a, you've got zillat and no izzat. And we mentally destroy our children from even becoming anything because of our own insecurities of wanting wealth. I say this, if you want to see success, look at the life of the Prophet he did not even have food on two occasions. Does that mean billah, that he was a failure? Prior to his demise, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had his armor with one Yahudi so he could be given some money to buy food for his family. 
Not even this much money in the house of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Ulama explain, why did he not take advantage of these riches? By, I'm not saying you have to live, live, like, live, live like this. I'm saying don't make this the thing of criterion between haq and batil. Don't make this your criterion between success and, and failure. Don't make this the thing to say kamyab, ghair kamyab. This is right and that is wrong. No. Success is only that in which Allah says, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said and shown and he showed in his life. This is what we need to bring in within our worldly life. So this is why I say this, babe, these are just reminders. But go back and try to give these messages within the family as well. Try and do something as a family. Because we've made Eid so boring, Billah, our children aren't interested. Well, look what happens at Christmas, my brothers. Houses are lit up, presents are bought, effort is made. What, you think our kids aren't affected? Then you're living in cuckoo land, an ostrich with a ground head in the ground. Because they are affected. We talk kids, we teach kids, we know. They can't help but be like, like what they see in the glitter and the glamour of the houses. The environment, it has an effect and it has an athar. We as Muslims need to think out of this box. Think out of the box that I'm going to go back to Swat, Swabi, Gujar Khan, Babel, wherever you're from. Inshallah, you keep those roots. But your children are from here as well. Think long term UK. Think how I can preserve the deen in this country for my children. Think how I can preserve Islam for my nasal. Allah ki qasam, this will be the best thing you could leave to for your family. On one side you have no wealth, but a mahfuz family with iman. And on one side you have the riches of the dunya, but kufr and dalala. Which person, sane individual would choose wealth over iman? But you have to give time. It deserves time, it requires time, it, it, it needs effort. Let's go with this intention at least. On the day of Eid. On the day when du'as are accepted. Ya Allah, I've made some mistakes but inshallah I'm going to try my best and do what I can for my family. I'm going to try and bring my family back to deen. Once lost, never, re never sometimes got back. We need to do what we can and not leave no stone unturned. And inshallah if we are successful, Allah will help. Allah, if, if Allah helps, we will be successful. And we will keep on striving, keep on making effort to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala until the day we leave this dunya. Success is not based on what you and I have made. Wallahi, success is what Allah said. فَمَنْ زُحْزِحَ عَنِ النَّارِ وَأُدْخِلِ الْجَنَّةِ فَقَدْ فَازِ Whosoever has been safeguarded from the fire of Jahannam and whosoever has been given entry into Jannah, this individual, he is the one who is called successful. Allah Ta'ala give us tawfiq wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillah rabbil alameen.